Right, it's Vengeance versus Nilo. So we've got Pichu versus Joker. We're just talking about Joker. There's a Joker on each team. Um, and it's Nilo's going to be the Joker for Ferris. And Davenport has Vengeance to Pichu. So this matchup is kind of the, the top tier from when the game first came out versus the current leader of the tier list. And I'm excited. Yeah. Man, got. I remember when the game first came out and just the meta around Pichu. That forward tilt was just like absolutely bonkers and they nerfed that everyone was like oh maybe i just don't want to play the small mouse anymore uh, really yeah yeah and another it's it was so it was just so hard to hit him before it was so impossibly difficult to hit pichu if you were a, a but really any human character right so much taller than him but they they made his hurt box just a little bit bigger and that made all the difference in the world yeah, dropping an early stock, a uh, poor little bit of a, a poor recovery there. I'm not, I'm not sure if that was a, a miss input or what. If he just got cut underneath the stage, but he drops one early. Nile is up three stocks to his two, so a good start out for Ferris. But that strong smash attack from Pichu coming out, trying to even it up early. But Arsen is here, trying to make it an even wider difference. Yeah, that's huge. That uh, jab reset force smash, not getting the kill on Joker is a big deal because he had Arsen, but. Pichu managed to get through the full arson and only take 30 damage, which is good for Pichu because Pichu is at kill percent against arson when yep. when he's at like like 50, like right now. Like now, oh, yeah. You got to be afraid of dying with Pichu. Yep. Up tilt, up tilt, follows it up with the neutral there. air. I think Pikachu is like six units lighter than the second lightest character, which I believe is Squirtle. Jiggly, uh, is it Squirtle or Jigglypuff? I'm not sure. but One of the two, but yeah. either way, Pichu is much, much lighter than the second lightest. It's very, very light. All right, and here's Arsene back again. At this point, very much in kill percentage. Oh, barely missing that down smash. Really good awareness from Vengeance to not roll into that and just stay where he was. That would have been deadly. Yeah, that uh, uh, Nihilus is pretty lucky that that force smash didn't connect because Vengeance put out the counter and... Uh, it, just didn't happen even though vengeance takes the second stock and he's still up i think nihilus is doing a good job of closing the gap that was created by his early i don't i'm not positive if it was an sd but it just kind of missed recovery um he was so low i don't know if he was going to make it even with the, with the double quick attack but i think he right would, I think we can call it an sd early on he's doing a good job now what he wants is to take this stock before arson shows up 120 percent, but a very very close to full bar for arson yep Falling neutral air, and I'm seeing a lot of just hitting on shield from Nilo here. Um, and but Vengeance not really making too much use of it, so um, tries to throw out the projectile, almost catches in it. But Arsene is here with the half a bar left to try and finish this one out. Remember, this is in crew battle format, even if you can't take the next one, I was going yeah. to say it's very important that you at least take this second stock, but. Not yep. able to take the second stocks. We're going to hop right into it. Let's see where these players decided to head to. He does stick with the cloud with Nilo's Joker. And remember, uh, they are going to be waiting 30 seconds before we get into this. I'm going to take this moment to explain to some of the viewers. I'm not sure if you understand, if you're, if you're new to Smash, if you're new to crew battles, the way this works. Each team has four players that they have uh, picked to go in. Each has three stocks. You'll see the score up top and you fight until your stocks are done first team to lose all of their stocks loses so that also means that if you lost one stock in your previous battle you do have to start this battle off taking your first stock because now you're only going to it two you'll see that how nilo only has two left since uh vengeance took his first but let's get started here we go something to remember is that nilo's uh is a he is a joker cloud co-main so hmm. if anybody knows how the thing, another way to beat Cloud, not just with reads, but the main thing to take advantage of as far as his weaknesses is his, uh, his offstage Ooh. recovery. And now we see it. He was only at 3%, so there's not a huge Yeah, he was. But he, oh, oh, oh! oh. There, followed by the limit up B. <laughs> I was going to say, Kylo is going to know how to how to take advantage of Cloud offstage, which you absolutely have to do if you want to beat Cloud online. And... He got the he got the arson down there, but it gave Cloud limit, which yeah. allowed him to his up B recovers go, goes like seventy five percent further when he has limit. So that's one of those situations when you're just in it. It's like, man, really, <laughs> really. <Yeah. laughs> I you broke his shield and down there did with arson off stage. I, I feel right. like I heard that. Stock. It it doesn't. I know it doesn't start out much better than that, but here he is dropping the first. What? Yeah. Well, I will say that by the time he broke his shield, he was he was at seventy percent, and and True. Uh, notice was only at three percent. 
but it would have been such a, a, a welcome turnaround. That being said, Nylos does... Uh, Ferris has the stock advantage, so at least it's that's not something to happen when you're already already down. But Nihilus is definitely going to want to take this stock, and uh, you always want to you want to maintain your lead. But if you can take two stocks, and that would be you don't have to win the game. Just two stocks would be would be more than enough for uh, Ferris in this situation. But you don't want to make you don't want to let them make it even because they got best nest. The whole every single right. game. Throughout the whole crew battle, it comes down in the back of the mind, you know that you've got to deal with best nest. Get as big a cushion as you possibly can before that happens. But now Nihilus is just like, man, I need, I, I want to take this one stock at the very, very least. I like what we're seeing from Exodus here. Uh, I, I think you can tell he's really confident with Cloud. He, he understands how to use him. But to your point, he knows what's going to be coming at him with Joker. Yep. Oh, he pineappled himself. He got pineappled. He got pineappled. That's a... Again, a pineapple is when you if you die when your opponent is 140 percent. It's in a crew battle. It's the equivalent of them picking up two, like a recovery heart. Right. Ganon was one of the characters that got to Elite Smash like the quickest, but then dropped out faster than anybody else too. Um, so it's interesting how how that worked on Wi-Fi. But then you run into those Ganons who who maintain and are good enough to stay up there. It's scary. It's a perfect reflection of where Ganondorf... The reason Nintendo keeps... Like, every single game, Ganondorf, besides Melee, is is considered low or bottom tier. He's never said very good. A lot of people consider him the worst character in this game, despite the devastating things that he can do to you. And I think the reason Nintendo stays so hesitant to buff him is because the tier list is based on how good he is in a meta full of very competent players. But in general, against the layman, against a normal everyday player, Ganondorf is potentially one of the best or scariest characters in the game. He's so devastating against a player who who isn't an actual Smash competitor that Nintendo doesn't is hesitant to buff him and make him any stronger. You know what I mean? Right. And that, that reflects very much in that he can get into Elite Smash easy because but when you're not Elite Smash, you're playing against players who don't know what to do against Ganondorf. But then once yeah. you get there and you're playing against the competent actual competitive smashers suddenly Ganondorf's options are uh considered amongst the worst in the game it's a weird Little. interesting contrast he read the role in there but just he let the forward smash rip a little bit too early yep uh exodus is doing kind of exactly what i thought he would be doing just using that uh blade beam just to, to push him out when he when he can and then just waiting for oh oh boy <laughs> you're waiting Waiting for Ganon to to maybe pull out a side B, maybe get anxious, maybe make a mistake because Ganon has those moves that are are very very damaging, very punishing, but also very readable. Man, so far we have seen Cole uh, correctly read Exodus's defensive options with smash attacks twice and just barely actually missed time the release. Yeah, but that's interesting. The what he. I think what we, he, he did end up taking that first stock, but one thing I, I thought was interesting, he decided to use the limit just to, uh, as, as the projectile, just to knock him off the ledge there. Um, yeah. And he had, had to charge it back up again. Um, interesting not to use that as a more, kind of, I guess, effective ledge guard. Yeah, that's true. Uh, clouds, I think a lot of the time it comes down to the fact that in this game, oh. the limit will just disappear. Get out of here. You know? Yeah. So he had, it was like he didn't have time to wait for a better opportunity. He didn't want it to just disappear. That's a good point. And then, yeah, we saw the fourth tilt just booting him off the stage. <laughs> yep. Which is really devastating for Cloud, even if he doesn't hit the blast zone just because of his recovery, if he doesn't have a limit. Yeah, that's the thing is with Cloud, it's it, the blast zone might as well be cut in half. Again, he reads the roll incorrectly. He just times the, the coverage a little wrong. It's like he, he's he's get he's getting the hard parts of being Ganon down. <laughs> right, yeah, he's got the reads. It's just the timing. Um, and, oh, jumps up with the down smash. I'm sorry, down air, able to to pop Cloud up real high, not able to get any further punish out of it, and then runs right into the dash attack. Exodus in advantage now has a full limit charge. Let's see what he does with it. Jumps up the turn around limit cross slash, able to poke through the shield, put a lot of damage on, but not enough to send heavy Gammon can it across the stage and through the blast zone and again catching him with an up b he's just putting a whole lot of damage on him but not able to finish this one off oh he hit him with the up smash but with the backswing doesn't matter get the up b out of shield uh 
Cloud's up B out of shield is is very, very good with or without limit, but with limit, it'll also kill you, even if you're amongst the heaviest characters in the game. Right. Man, this was dead even just a moment ago, and he, he lapped him in stocks that quick. Oh, there there's the read! He got there's it! The timing that we he was looking for in the beginning. You just gotta hold on for a minute, be a little bit more patient, they'll they'll roll in. It seems like Exodus has a, a rolling in habit that Cole has caught on to. Oh, oh so be careful! <laughs> what? He just laid? Hmm? I'm yeah. Not <laughs> Exodus did the first mission. Yeah. You're expecting a neutral getup or a roll in, but Cole decided to do neither of those things. And Exodus, well, fine. If you're just gonna let me lay there and let me do it, yep. okay, that's a whole different thing. Rob is a is a monster in the format. Rob and Cloud are kind of considered two two of the most buffed by the format, if not the two most buffed by this format uh, characters. So here we go. We're gonna wait for it to get down to six thirty. Like we have been up to this point. I like the... Yeah. <laughs> I really um, like... Um, I, I think it's a... Uh, what, do, what do you think about the stage pick for the two of them? I, I think Rob is, likes the flat stage a little bit. I also think he always, can get a like, good amount of combo extensions off platforms, but... If you can, you want to take Cloud to FD or a flat stage. You always... Yeah. Cloud gets so much off of platforms. Rob gets a good amount of platforms too, but you just want to get Cloud to where he can't shark Right. Like, it's very important. If he get, if he leaves FD for you, you take it. Always. It's a lot like uh, Snake. There's, yeah. That, like, there's a couple characters where FD is really good against them, and uh, Cloud and Snake are one of them. Is that going? It. Wow. He, it does. Finishing touched him. Why did he do that? <laughs> All right. Is starting go, go. out strong here. Got one stock ah, left and yeah. comes out hard hitting. He's now taking six, hasn't he? Yeah, he's taking six. That's six up. for him. If he can take a seventh one, this is this is done. It's not looking so Barely. good here for that. Barely avoids the gyro off stage. He had his limit anyway, so I think he would have survived, but he's doing he's doing a lot of damage, man. He's not making it even if he's at 110, he's making it very clear to miss that if you want to take the stock before you lose yours, you're gonna have to do your do your worst. Oh, got the shield up in time after the whipped up smash, but dropped a little bit. Ended up taking a little bit of damage from the cross slash, and just the cross slash has been devastating. I just think he's been. Uh, Exodus has done a good job of, of kind of running up, pausing, waiting to see if Mist is going to do anything, and then just getting him with a perfectly spaced cross slash. It seems like Mist has a uh, kind of a habit of wanting to grab after shielding the first swipe or two of cross slash. And he goes yeah. for the grab, and he can't reach, and then it drops shield, and he gets hit by the rest of it. Those multi-hit uh, attacks, especially, you know, sorties that, that have those, and, you know, people's thoughts are, I'm going to shield grab you. That That's going to, nope, not enough. But, um, you know, Cloud's Cross Slash is one of them. Uh, Dancing Blade from the, from the uh, you know, Lucina from the rest of the sorties are another one. But that's something you really have to be careful about, and that's where character matchup and just, just total understanding of the game and the entire roster comes in handy. But... Yeah. Miss able to get a grab in the center of the stage, get the berry followed up with an up air, and he puts the stopper to Exodus's reign of terror here. Do you do that a lot? Is that something you go for, or do you like to... I'm, uh, no, I'm Ken. Combo. Oh, yeah, you're Ken. Duh. Huge combos. I break a lot of shields, and if I break them at zero, then I can do down air, heavy jab, crescent kick, uh, nair, up air, up air, medium, show you. <laughs> there you go. I don't need to do a, a smash attack, but I think it depends on the character. In that case, it was Joker with Joker. They, he hits too hard. I'm not sure if that's he got true. Yeah. yeah, especially when they're on the platform, so you can't like chase them, you know? Right. So I think that was the right option. He did like 38 damage or something like that. All right. So three, turns out Rob's two, got he's got a one. strong Rob here, and he is pulling it out. Best Ness with the tag Spencer Spencer G Gamer is apparently his. Is that his real name? That's what I got here in the Garner, maybe. Garner. Yeah, maybe it's the RN. I was like, no way. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Spencer <laughs> Gamer. I was like, wait a second here. My but... name is Gamer, and I am the best guest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, we are going to see Spencer's Rob. Or best Ness is Rob. I don't know what to call him Spencer. Um, it just is what it says over the top of the Rob. But best Ness... I, I call you Jordan when I commentate you, so... Well, my tag is Jordan. <laughs> my tag has my name in it, so it's a little different. Um, everybody in Michigan knows me as Jordan, and then and then... Uh, player unknown shows up, and nobody wants to call him player unknown, so everybody calls him Jordan. It makes me mad. <laughs> <laughs> but Bessna starting out strong, gets the strong hit across the stage, and there goes Miss Last Stock. 
best that's nets. So slow. That looked like a yeah. Smash 4 kill. He's I was gonna like, say, yeah, that looked like we were watching Brawl or Smash Four. Just yeah. sit, sitting in the boxing ring, waiting 15 seconds to uh, hit A. Yeah. Um, so yes, we are gonna see the wolf versus Spencer, and we are the battlefield counter pick, which you know it's a good stage for both characters. And now we're gonna do the countdown. And then we're going to get into this, and it's up to – Jamie's got three stocks. Unlike Mist, he's got a full three stocks to work with. Let's see if that can help him. The, the, what Jeremy – the situation that Jeremy is looking at right now is that he needs to take three stocks from Best Ness, which is an insanely difficult thing to do in its own right, and then three more stocks from whoever they send in as their last – as their anchor. And they've got Smithers, the King K. Rule, still waiting, as well as Pow Pow. Yep, and well, this is tough. I would not want to be Jeremy in this situation, but it's almost a, it's almost so tough that you kind of know that the that the pressure's off. No one's gonna judge you if you can't do it. You know what I mean? Right. I, I think if you're in this this situation, it's like okay, yeah. Let me let me take a let me take a couple stocks here. That would be fantastic. I would so. yeah. I would love to if you can take two stocks versus best nest right now in this situation. Then I I would go home feeling great. Yep, home. and We're all at home, but you know what I mean. Keep in mind too that uh, you know Ferris has already done better than Davenport's last opponent in Kettering. Uh, they've gotten down the they've gotten Davenport down to six stocks, where Kettering uh, took them down to seven. So anything they get um, on Best Ness here is just essentially you know could could be some bonus in in making that little bit of a divide and, and making them stand out a little bit more. Yeah, that's true. Um... Oh, I'm not sure. I think he meant to do get up attack shield, but the get up attack clang not clang, but it traded with the with the gyro. Yep. Him off stage, so the shield input became an air dodge input. You know, a uh, smash ultimate. Yeah. Bye bye. System went buff or something like that from pretty far away. I love the weak back throw just into oh oh no into Ooh, gyro. Unfortunate stocks. Yeah. I wonder why uh, Best Ness wasn't going wasn't gonna try and go for an edge guard there, but. Easy. He could see. He's like, I, I don't need it. <laughs> I, I foresee the future, he says. Yeah, so you're going you're gonna to edge guard yourself just fine. You yeah. Don't I honestly think that Jeremy went for a very specific angle. The reason that he has D there is because he really badly wanted to get. It's a it's a tough angle to go just a little bit to, to the side with uh, Wolf instead of straight up. And he was so scared, Best Ness's presence forced him to try and go for that angle, and that's what killed him. So, yep. in a way. Best Ness did edge guard him. A lot of SDs, that is kind of the case. The presence. Tries to follow up, picks up the gyro, tries to throw it down and grabs it. Goes off stage, gets back on with a get up attack. Tries to follow up with an air to center stage, but these players both fighting it out in neutral right now. Find themselves on the right side, misses the grab, but no punish. Rolls back away and gets him with the gyro. Yep. Oh, oh. And that shield release looked like that must have been frames away from being a parry, but. Yeah. Parry. He gets back aired and Best Ness seals up four straight stocks without losing any. And he takes it for uh, Davenport. They win by six.